Tonight, part one with actor Lauren Ash talking Drake, James Franco, Keanu Reeves, Tommy Wiseau, Chris Evans, the best day of her life, the worst thing about her house, Chicago accents, Timmy Hose, and bagged milk. It's up all night with Bob. Come on, hang out for half an hour. How hard is that? Folks, my guest tonight is a gifted actor, performer, and alum of Second City Mainstage in both Chicago and Toronto, who just last year wrapped six seasons starring as Dina on NBC's hit show Superstore, and can currently be heard voicing both Diane on the very funny Netflix animated series Chicago Party Ant, and on her wildly successful podcast True Crime and Cocktails, which she hosts with her cousin and pal Christy Oxborough. Please extend a warm welcome to a friend, a confidant, and the first guest on our show under the age of 40, please welcome Ms. <laughs> Lauren Ash. Listen, I just scraped in, okay? Just right by the skin of my teeth. Wow, now you, you know, it's a sliding scale and it, yes. it, around here. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing great. I love um, it. It is lovely to see you. You look yeah. lovely. You, uh, 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 tell us about the, the, this is very, when you showed up, I've seen photos of you, of course, yes. online and whatnot, but the blonde is very, straight. this, by the way, I love this. Thank you. And that's not to say that I didn't like you as a redhead, but I think this looks fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I have always wanted to go blonde, and I I, di I dipped in uh, like ten years ago, but it was the uh, the person that did it didn't do a very good job. Ah. So when Superstore ended, I had to look fairly similar for six years, and I was like, you know what? Now's the time. Right. Now's the yes. time. So once we got it to the point of the pandemic that we could start coloring our hair again, because for a while I just was letting it go, and that got real gnarly. Um, <laughs> my my dear friend who does my hair for all my events, he was like, "We're gonna do it slowly." So he slowly has been transitioning me, literally for like a year. Oh, this so explains it, why yes. why it was so kind of subtle. Yeah, this is very wise. I so think. that it doesn't destroy your hair, because if you do it quickly, then you can kind of fry your hair. And so, yeah. my hair has literally like never been healthier, and I I feel uh, I feel alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look alive. And I'll tell you this though, very quickly, fun yeah. fact: blondes have more fun, and I'm going to tell you why. It changes your life. Now, is this because you feel differently when you step out of the home or because people are, are, are what would you explain? I don't know whether it's an internal, external, or combination of both, but like, I have not paid for valet. <laughs> I have literally not paid for a drink. I have like, I was, and I turned to a friend of mine who's blonde and I was like, is this what it's always been for you? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, I would have transitioned years ago had I known. Come on. You and I, of course, uh, are uh, neighbors. You yes. live uh, uh, just a little north of me. How are you doing with the, how were the planes over the last couple of years, if I, <sighs> if I may ask? When how are I, the planes now? You know, when I was searching for my home, I, I got all the reports you can get. I was looking at crime reports. I got like you know the 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 the, the build the the land the the, the engineers right. come and they they look at the foundation and everything. Yeah. The only thing that I did not know to check was flight path. <laughs> <Flight paths. laughs> and I I am directly on a flight path. And let me tell you something. It is it's unrelenting. Yeah. And what it is now. So before it was kind of like. We would play a drinking game in the backyard in the summer because it was like, oh, ha, 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 there's so many planes, they're so loud, whatever. Yeah. But post-pandemic, mid to current day, actors are doing self-tapes at home. Right. And it is a living, breathing hell because I'll be in the middle of doing a scene and feeling like, oh, it's really clicking. And then it's like, <laughs> like just the loudest fucking planes. This is the sound of my madness. Again, and they're inevitably there is no rhyme or reason to the schedule, right. and they'll be like five in a row. Right. So you're trying to rush to get a, a you know like a two minute scene, to, and yeah, it's is there, uh, is there at least tough. is there at least like a hard out at the end of a night? Like, do they are they are they done at a certain hour? You know, I don't. I couldn't tell you because I feel like I've been out there at night in the dark and they're still going. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> this isn't LAX, by the way, we should point out. We're no, both in the valley. We're in the valley. This is Burbank Airport. Yes. Which gets <laughs> clearly a considerable amount of traffic. I, well, the other thing though is that there's also the Van Nuys Airport. And I think that there's a, it's a mix of both. So oh, you've got I the smaller see. planes going over there. You've got the bigger planes going to Burbank. And I'm just in the, I'm in the middle. Right. I'm in the sweet spot. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's talk about Chicago Party Ant for a second because I, 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 this is really funny. So there's eight of them now on, on Netflix. Yes. Uh, and, uh, describe the, the, the well, descri describe Diane. Diane is uh, oh, just a hard partying um, northern Chicago lady who, uh, you know, she's never had, a, she doesn't have any children of her own. She really is close to her, her, her nephew. Uh, no, sorry, she has had a child of her own. What am I talking about? But she's also very close to her nephew. Um, and she's just like, 
If you've ever spent any time in Chicago, if you've ever been to a Cubs game in Chicago, having lived in Chicago for a couple of years, you will have met a Diane. If yes. she is the, and they are, listen, they exist all over the world, certainly. I think that it's a very relatable kind of archetype, just that hard partying lady who's maybe on the other side of, you know, 45, 55. Mm -hmm. um, but especially in Chicago, there is just this breed of lady and they're at the Cubs games and they are so drunk. And when you meet them in the bathroom, they're your best friend for four minutes. Good luck doing better than this. When life gives you lemons, you turn that shit into Mike's Hard Lemonade. Daniel has decided he doesn't want to go to Stanford and you're gonna let him live here with you. And they're my favorite kind of gal. I love yeah. these ladies. You yeah. know what I mean? It's 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 not me, but it's 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 Lauren Ash adjacent. There's, an, there's you know enough of I mean? you in there that oh, you yeah. can kind of you, yep. you can you can find a, a uh, yeah a toehold. I with the kid. Well, so the 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 the, the, the Chicago accent. Did you? I mean, you spent it. How how many years? Cumulatively, or how much time cumulatively did you spend in Chicago doing Second City? I lived there for two years. Well, that's a, that's a, that's long enough to. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. I did the main stage there, so I was doing like eight shows a week, like twelve shows a week over Christmas times, which is wild. Yeah. Um, but what I'll tell you is, is that I came in from Toronto feeling like my voice was normal and that I did not have an accent. Yes. And what they, my castmates who I adore all of, but I will say what they loved to do was point out to me on stage in front of an audience anytime I said a word differently than how they said a word. Yes. So very quickly I, I was like, well, I don't want to constantly be getting called out for saying words weird as the Canadian. Yeah. Um, so I kind of adopted very quickly like this quasi Chicago accent just to try and blend in so that it was like, I don't want to, you know, again, like it's like, let's just do what we're doing here. I don't want to do that. Yeah, right. Um, so the joke is, is that there was a time period where my voice got so bizarre, but I never booked more voice work in Toronto more than around that time because they were like, you're great. Like you kind of sound American, but not. And I was oh, like, this so is amazing. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of like, as after I left and I wasn't doing that job every single day, my voice settled into what it normally is, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it was so funny when this job came up, I was like, oh my God, that must have been my my training. Who yeah, knew? I'll almost always round out my outs and my abouts. But that's long before I moved here. Same thing, because I used to do voiceover work in Toronto. Right. And one day I was doing a really late, the non-union stuff is always like some industrial video. Yes. You've got like 25 minutes on roofing or something <laughs> like that. Yep. And there were, and every time I got to you know, whatever it was, house or out or about or mouse or, and they would stop tape and go, okay, you can't do that. But then you come here and you start talking to people from home or you, or you watch a little bit of CBC on TV and you go from, oh, we don't have an accent to, oh my God, listen to these f hosers. <laughs> I know, it's so true. Sometimes I'll be talking to my mom on the phone and I'm like, oh, bless her. I, I, I never, but before I never heard it. I never heard it. Isn't now, that wild? Like, oh my God. And not just out house and about, but you know the words process and process. Of course. Things that you don't necessarily think about, but that are like. It's weird ones for me too, like harbor. 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 So harbor. As opposed to harbor. So do they say, Har they say wait, what do we what They do would they say, say harbor, and I'm saying harbor. Harbor. <laughs> Going up to the harbor. <laughs> I, the but harbor. I, and that's not even, I don't even know where that comes from. I'm not from the East Coast. No, I don't yeah, know. it does say it has a little I don't East know, Coast but you like way. slip into these weird, it's so funny. Another one of those, I was on a, I did a date, one of my first day players when I was very young in Toronto was on a Donnie Wahlberg show, the name of which is leaving me. It was right. canceled before my episode even aired. Was right. it called? Fugitive, ransom, hostage, I don't remember. Anyway, the point is, um, one of my lines was, I was playing a, a highway patrol officer, I've got a hit. Um, <laughs> and it was there was a tornado coming, and the line was, funnel's been spotted a half mile down the road. That was the line. Funnel, Funnel has been spotted half a half mile, mile down, down the, road. the road. I'm trying to predict what the what the trick what uh, yes. the, what's going to trip what you would up it, here. What would trip you up there? Funnel. I, I'm a, I'm going to say funnel. But here's the thing. They were like, You're, she sounds too Canadian. And I was like, funnel, funnel, funnel. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know. That one doesn't, I don't know. That one, I'm like, I don't hear the Hard difference. Hard to figure out a different way to say it. I couldn't it. hear the difference. And then Donnie Wahlberg, this is one of my favorite stories. He started going, because he's very Boston, yeah. obviously. He's like, is that pronunciation shot in her trailer? There's one in mine. And I was like, oh my God, this is escalating. This is escalating. So.
sorry. There, imagine though, for just a second. Yeah. Take take a walk down imagination lane of with course. me. That there were a show called Toronto Party Ant. Yeah. And you had to do uh, as big a Toronto accent accent as you know Diane is Chicago. It's hard because when I try and push a Canadian accent, I find that I instinctively do start to sound very East Coast. Yes. But I feel I feel like. You know who did a great Toronto specific accent was Drake when he was hosting SNL and he did a Jeopardy. It's spot on. Wait, you're a black Canadian? Obviously, dog. I mean, like, yo, there's thousands of us. I'm sure you've met a few of us before. <laughs> no. Because I feel like a Toronto accent is it's Canadian. Uh, what what are my my trigger words to go into there? Timmy Hose. You want to go to Timmy Hose get a double double? Yeah. Yeah, cause, because again, I go East Coast, so then I'm going East Coast, I'd be like, oh yeah, let's go down, we'll yeah. check out the lobster traps there, we'll go to the Timmy yeah. Hole, get a, get a double double. That, so it's like kind of like dialing that down a little bit, you know what I mean? And then there's, it depends on the kind of person, right? Because then there's the dudes that I grew up with in Belleville that would be like, you wanna go out for a rip? Let's go get, uh, let's go smoke some darts, go out for a rip, eh? Yeah. We'll go get a two four, we'll go down and get a two four, Molson, Molson, uh, Molson Canadian, yeah? yeah. Uh, what do you wanna do? What were we gonna do for me two four long? Right, go that feels like it's getting a little bit closer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Go get it. Also, if you if you uh, if you're going to go get a deck of smokes. Yeah. Oh, I got myself a deck of smokes. Yep. Yeah, it's like about go the. Go get a bag yeah. of milk. Good. Yep. <laughs> oh, a, a, an ex boyfriend of mine, I was telling him about it once, and he went, Are, "Aren't people just always poking it with like safety pins?" And yeah. and I went, "Isn't it so interesting that his like he was from the south? Isn't it funny that his brain from yeah. from the south in America was like immediately going, oh." Well, this is what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> and me as a Canadian going, <laughs> never even occurred to me. Never but thought of it once. This is like, he means like as a prank, like just yeah. like poke a hole in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody's going into the grocery stores in Canada with, with a safety pin <laughs> so, so taped to their finger and going, yeah, we got him. Like, uh, Speaking of milk. Yeah. I had forgotten that you did uh, 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 the lip sync battle a couple of years oh ago my God, yes. with Ben Feldman, which was just, just amazing. So Ben comes out and does, I think, kind of Liberace yes. kind of doing... Um, Celine what was Dion. Not, oh, it's, oh, Celine Dion. Yes. yes, yes. And you did Vogue by Madonna yes. looking mighty sexy. Now you come down the thing and at the end of the, at the, end of the number, there's, I, I'm guessing it looks like a saucer of milk. Is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. Was that a saucer of milk? And if so... What kind of condition was that in after a couple hours under the hot lights? <laughs> Absolutely. I think it was Express Yourself, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. It no, was no, no, Express Only yourself. because yeah. in the video for Express Yourself, she turns into a cat and then she drinks milk. So that was the kind of idea there. I'm just giving you a real... No, no, no. It would, yes. A peek behind the curtains. Yeah. It, was, it was almond milk. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, which they were passionate about because they didn't want dairy to spoil. I was going to say. So there was, was that thought. was on their mind. Um, you know, I kicked myself because there was one move that I forgot and it was a very over the top, like mimed lap of that milk before I poured it all over myself. Ah. Um, but it was still cool. It still felt yeah. cool to the touch, but that yeah. may have also been because I was buzzing from yeah. being so, <laughs> well, that was honestly one of the greatest days of my life. I mean, you couldn't. Truly, truly. I'm actually, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that because not only because you had a good time, but also because it's one of those things that you watch and you think, God, that looks like fun. And very few things that look like fun are fun. So that's yes. why. <laughs> well, I think it's just because it's this whirlwind part of a, it's a whirlwind, which t I think TV is in general, which is not, I'm not, a, uh, you know, this, I'm not a stranger to that, but you go in and they're literally like, there's like a choreographer and a team of dancers and they're like, we have whatever it was, four hours and we're gonna do this. And I'm like, right. that feels impossible because I don't dance right. or do this for a living. <laughs> this is four and hours learning the choreography, everything. Everything, getting, getting fit for your costume, oh my hair God. and makeup, the whole, the whole deal. And, and so I just remember like, I was like, okay, let's go. And we, we were doing it and I was like, this is so fun. And every time that that team of male dancers lifted me, I, I and I was, I was just like, I, this is the greatest. I, 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 if you look at every take, like when they're lifting me and I'm like on my side, I'm beaming. Yeah. Like I can't even play the character in that moment because I'm just like, this is so silly and fun and it's just the best. It's time to play our, the, the sensation that's sweeping the, whatever the hell this is, clickbait. I call it clickbait. Here's how clickbait works. Yes. Clickbait. 
Here's the idea. I'm going to read you a clickbaity headline that I'm going to try and that I would put into a thumbnail okay. to try and cravenly get as many views as I can. Of course. You see if you've got a story to match it. Absolutely. Lauren Ash revealed her biggest celebrity crush, and our jaws are on the floor. Now, am I supposed to be ma matching what the real one of these clickbaity titles is? Because I no, know. No, you can just oh, say. Oh, because that is a real one, or that's oh. close to a real one that's out there. Was oh, that a real one? Yes, because okay. it was Keanu Reeves that I revealed, oh, and wait. then I was like, oh, okay. is, "Is that a big shock?" <laughs> Not. I don't know but that our I, jaws are on the floor. But what I love is, is that that there's a there was a follow up. This is what's amazing. So I was asked on a red carpet about a celebrity crush, and it was right when Keanu Reeves had come had come forward with this long term girlfriend, and I said, "Listen, um, you know, I I'd like them to break up amicably, and we can all summer together." Or I made some kind of joke. It was just me being playful. Right. And then something got brought up, and I was like, "Look, I'm 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 not saying that I'm opposed to Chris Evans. Chris Evans also, I am very open to." <laughs> But the way that the article came out, it was like, Lauren Ash reveals celebrity crush. And I was like, wait a second. And then there was a follow-up that's like, Lauren Ash says she would settle for Chris Evans. And I was like, settle? Oh my God. Like, this is, this is hell. Please tell me, Chris Evans, you don't Google yourself and that you didn't come across this. Oh my God. What happened to Lauren Ash on the set of Aquafina's Nora from Queens is shocking. <laughs> love these so much. <laughs> yes, what did happen to me on that set? Well, I'll tell you this. I parked in an underground garage, parking garage um, that was so uh, desolate, dark. There was literally a river of water and a board that had been put over it. Oh, dear. Uh, this is the parking, whatever. Anyway, long story short, I, I couldn't get out. I was done partway through the day. I didn't work the full day. It was a quick, quick shoot. And I couldn't get out. There was cars blocking me in. And then I was just trapped there. <laughs> Literally, that is true. So, and you live there now, and that is my home. That yep. is your home. It's now. beautiful with that river that runs through it. <laughs> uh, oh, Lauren Ash has a secret about uh, co-star Mark McKinney that will blow your mind. <laughs> I do. I absolutely do. Um, uh, well, listen. The, the number one that that people would actually be shocked by is that his voice isn't actually like that. Yes. For the superstore <laughs> fans, they're like, "What?" Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of a. I'm trying to think of one that seems more scandalous. I you know what? it's hard because he doesn't. He's not a scandalous guy. He's not a scandalous really, guy. No, no, no. He's a very lovely guy. But you know what? I think the thing with clickbait is, is that sometimes you click it and then the story is such a letdown. Yeah. That this feels <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it can be a letdown. Yeah. 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 The yeah. whole show's a letdown. I don't know why I should, it, this part should be any never, different. Never, I, never. I said, I asked him, I was asking him about celebrity impressions because on SNL, and he used to do like Steve Jobs. And I said, well, what was your Steve Jobs? And he says, it was the same as Glenn on Superstar. I just go up an octave. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Um, I want to talk about one of your other illustrious um, uh, roles yes. because I think you know you, you may know that I'm obs mildly obsessed with this. Uh, the Disaster Artist. Of course. I know it was. I know it was only a day, but my goodness, what a day! Now, were you? Did you? How much did you know about the room going in? How, were you a fan or, or, yes. or whatever you call fans of the room? Yes. So I had actually. This is kind of a fun story. So I had gotten an audition to play the role that went to. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the actress's name, but it was to play the role of like the wardrobe designer or assistant or whatever in the in the movie. In, in the movie. In the movie, yes. not not the movie within the movie. Oh. Right. So so the one that so in the story in the Oh, like artist, there's a wardrobe you mean in the room there's there's a No. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in the story, like in, in the, the story, in the story of, of the disaster art. Right, of yes. them making the room. Right. There was a wardrobe person. Got um it. so that was what I originally went into to audition for, but I was just chatting with the casting director and I I was saying that I was like, I genuinely love the room so much. I mean, I have gone to see it in theaters, I've watched it at home, like I'm such a genuine huge fan. I was just so excited to get this audition. And, and I wasn't being like I truly I was not trying to like suck up or anything but it was genuine and right. they were like well who's your favorite character in the movie and I was like the flower shop <laughs> lady and they were like oh we haven't cast that yet do you want to audition for that too and I went yes oh my and god and they said well we don't have the sides and I said I don't need them <laughs> they like well we'll pull it up on YouTube and I was like in my mind I was like I don't know I know, but I know sure. the scene but we pulled it up and, and then I yeah we just did it on the fly and uh, and so then they booked me for that part in the so that was in the, the recreation of the room within the disaster artist. That's it.
did the no shoot. shoot. Yeah. Here's my guess is what what happened on the yeah. day. Somehow the scene, I'm sure the scene was longer. And 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 clearly a whole bunch of chunk has been born out. But but Tommy is a regular here at the flower store. Yeah. And we know this yep. <laughs> only be, for two. So what do you what do you, what's the first? Because you have two lines, right? Oh hi Johnny, I didn't know it was you. Oh hi Johnny, I didn't know it was you. <laughs> That'll be seven fifty. You're my favorite customer. And then yeah. you're my favorite customer, mm -hmm. which is funny because. If you if he was your favorite customer, it's odd that he, you didn't know who he was when he first walked in. You'd think that maybe that might be a writing <laughs> hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly because, because he didn't come in in costume or wearing. And like, he also has a distinct voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. If Tommy Wiseau walks into a room, chances are you know that that's Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, say yeah, yeah. So even if you were uh, your eyes were closed, and you just <laughs> heard him. I think you could just like, kind of a waft. I, I think guess. would feel like would come in. I and guess. then, but my fa yes, my absolute favorite part is the end when she says, "Say the second line." You're my favorite customer. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye. Which is so clearly ADR it's because a, yeah. <laughs> they they're like, well, I don't know. You can tell they just came away from the scene going. They obviously cut out like whatever was in there, and they go, well, we still don't know why she seems to know him. Nope. <laughs> we nope. better clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Who was playing Tommy in that? It was uh, James Franco. Oh, it was James Franco. Right. So did you and were you? So did you work with him that day? Yeah. I mean, yeah, loosely. Yeah. Loosely, mm -hmm. loosely. He was also directing that movie. Oh, was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> More on James Franco <laughs> when we return. <laughs> was it an unpleasant experience? Um, you know what? He, <sighs> the rumor, the the way the story went. Right. He was method. So he was in character the whole time. Oh. But what I witnessed was that he was not. Okay. He was in the voice kind of the whole time, but he was chit-chatting to other people. Um, so with that in mind, I would say that I did not feel very welcomed by my director that day. Oh, I see. Um, because he was doing Tommy when you arrived? No, because he just didn't really seem to want to interact with me. Oh, okay. Which is odd for a director Well, particularly, of well, you know, um, particularly when you have a scene with him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but what I will say is, is we did the first take and I made him laugh. I made him break, and they told oh. me it was the first time that he had broken in the entire shoot thus far. Oh, well, that's nice. So, uh, even though you didn't say hello to me, James Franco, <laughs> you didn't talk to me at all, you weren't interested in uh, well, maybe you know, directing me as an actor. <laughs> it truly is one of those, there are so many kind of so bad they're good movies. Oh, yeah. And some of them are, but a lot of them are just kind of bad or boring. The Room is constantly and always uniquely bad and bad in different ways in different scenes oh, yeah. and baffling and never ever ever like most bad movies of the last 20 or 30 years like you know those kind of winky mm -hmm. we know we're bad we're trying to make a bad movie mm -hmm. kind of shit there there's something so earnest about it oh yeah it's earnest in its in its failure that, yes. But but that he had no concept of. I think it's just, it's so, um, there's no self-awareness at all. And it feels like, it It almost feels like, you know Garth Marenghi's Dark Place? Yes. That, to me, feels like what this is. You know what I mean? But it's not. Like, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is obviously scripted and they're all, everyone is in on the joke. This feels like it, it was that, but that he just wasn't in on the joke. Like, yeah. it's like you somehow managed to write something that was so brilliantly comedic. Yes. But not deliberately <laughs> at all. And, uh, you know, as much as he tried to claim after the fact that it was a, quote, dark comedy, it was like, no. No. Because have you seen his other stuff he's done since then? No. He did something, I think it was called Neighbors, and it was him trying to write a comedy, and of course right. it didn't work. Yeah. Because the whole point is, is that the, the thing that makes that movie special is that it was horrifically, it was so bad it was good, to the point that it felt like it was scripted that way, which of course it, it was not. It was a crazy person. Hey now, thanks for watching. Next time Lauren returns for part two, we talk true crime and cocktails. The podcast she does is fabulous. We talk a little Bob Crane. Remember him? He used to be in Hogan's Heroes, plus a lot of other fun stuff. Please do hit that subscribe button. Comment if you like. I'd love you. I love you. I don't know. What am I saying? Look, I'm still talking. There isn't even any picture here. Good night, everybody.